most people are in the room right now. Um, well, let's get started with the presentation. Welcome all. Uh, my name is Martin de Keizer. I'm a Dutch web developer coming from the Netherlands. Um, I'm working at Spin and Records. Um, I'm also a board member for PHP Benelux. Maybe you have heard of the conference in Belgium sometime. Um, if you want to ask any questions, you can find me on Twitter. Uh, my website, it's always under construction. I never finish it like most developers do. <laughs> but you can find it at that URL. So, Spin and Records. What is Spin and Records? I'll quickly explain. It's a record company, and our main goal is um, to promote new music and to make it known among the people and get it sold as much as possible. Um, well, maybe a video will say more than a thousand words. So, um, well, I just put in a small video of one of our uh, events at the uh, Miami uh, Music uh, Conference. So, as you can see, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> as you can see, we're all about house music. Uh, if you're into it as well, you might have seen some DJs that you're fond of, that you know. Um, but besides that, we also love digital media. Here you see all uh, of the platforms we're uh, doing social media marketing on, and you probably know at least one of them. <laughs> but today we will be focusing on just a few, because today we will be talking about live streaming. And let's get started by getting to know why and when would you want to start a live stream to your audience? Because it doesn't only apply to media companies, it could apply to your company as well. So, well, everyone knows these kind of presentations, and they were actually pretty clever, because everyone wanted to be there wanted to see it at the moment it got presented. So the timing of the Apple um, live streams were very important. Everyone was tuning in because they wanted to know, as the first ones, which new product was going to be presented by Mr. Jobs. Um, we do quite the same. If we have new music, we ask a DJ, could you do a live set? and we just stream it to the audience so they get the new music the first. But also, if you're presenting a new product for your company yourself, that could be an occasion to start um, your first live stream. And people will be happy to attend, even though it is virtual presence. It, they don't have to be there in physical form. They're just fine with tuning in from behind their PC and just getting, being the first to get to know what is new and what they can use and have. Um, another thing about live streaming is that you get direct feedback. So people will start opening a chat. Every modern live stream form service does have a chat these days. 
and they will start asking questions they will start telling you this is good i like this kind of stuff i like that kind of stuff maybe that could be different which gives you a lot of information and normally you open up a feedback form and people get these standard questions which they have to fill out now you can just monitor a chat stream and you can just get the good parts out of it to improve your product and make it even better or respond to them immediately to say okay that's a good idea for what you're uh, requesting but we're all already offering it it will be later on in the stream or things like that so it's a great way to engage with your users and we've been doing this for years already I don't know if anyone still knows the Cisco Webex meetings anyone here ever used it <laughs> they were horrible but they were actually quite the same for all the live web streaming services we have today so benefits and usages of live streaming you will get more followers on a social network if people are interested in your product they will press a like button press a follow button and they will get updates about your product and get interested and involved more and more so they will really engage in it um, if you're planning a live stream and something great will come up like Apple did with just some symbolic icons and stuff you will create some sort of a hype so they will be like okay what are they going to present I need to be there I need to see it and the hype will start to get real um, another thing is product presentation so if you have a product and it is kind of complex and you want to tell people more about it all they have to do open up the URL sit back grab a bag of popcorn and they will get all the information from your product without having to read through tedious pages of information which they probably won't do <laughs> so that makes live streaming also pretty um, comfortable for them um, and then there are screen costs so like I'm doing a presentation here now but I could also say okay I'll do it from home um, between seven and nine I will be live you can get ask me live questions and uh, well let you do the presentation then so screen costs are also a very nice way to present technical knowledge or stuff like that um, how did this all start within our company spin and records so we first had these weekly uh, radio shows called uh, spin and sessions this is an image uh, from the first uh, artwork from the first episode um, and they premiered on Twitch initially and this was what we used <laughs> it was a really crappy setup somewhere in the corner of our office <laughs> to broadcast those weekly premieres before we actually released the full radio show um, on, pod, uh, on uh, iTunes and stuff so what did it consist of it first started with ingredient one an mp4 file created by our video editors which was delivered from a Mac on a USB stick that USB stick was plugged into an old Windows desktop and we had open broadcaster software does anyone here heard hear of bro open broadcaster software before yeah I see some hands okay it's a Windows application which can just send a live video to social networks to uh, uh, broadcast um, it is quite okay but um, not really automatable you always have to be at the buttons and know what you're doing so that brings in the fourth ingredient uh, let's just call her Jenny she was a human being but she was totally non-technical she had to walk around with the USB stick plug it into the Windows PC open up open broadcaster software she had to know all the technical details of how the stream has to be sent to the social network well what could possibly go wrong you might ask yourself <laughs> simple <laughs> that's the answer <laughs> what actually happened is good thing people were waiting on twitch for the stream to start we had multiple people just waiting there connecting and waiting until that USB stick was plugged and ready to play but Jenny she was running around with that stick 
with the video which was put on it with a Mac. She stuck it in a Windows PC and the Windows PC said, hmm, I don't really recognize this type of file system. So she was running back <laughs> to the guy creating the video. She said, I need a FAT file system because the Windows PC, well, she didn't quite say that. She first asked us, why isn't this Windows PC actually accepting this USB stick? <laughs> so we had to reformat it, copy the video again on it. It took quite some time and it was quite tedious. What happened? She got frustrated, slammed her keyboard through the monitor. The users got angry in chat. They started saying, when does this stream start? Really, I can't wait any longer. Well, it was ugly, <laughs> really. So that's when we um, stepped in, but we also saw some other complications. You can stream on your local connection to one network, let's say Twitch or Facebook or YouTube. But let's say you have this weekly radio show and you want to stream all three, to all, that one radio show to all three networks at the same time. That takes up quite a lot of bandwidth. So that was something we wanted to oversee and make possible. Um, well, also at our office, the power wasn't connected really in a nice way. Um, so now and then we had power outages and we had that Windows PC standing in a corner and when a power outage occurred, internet was gone, PC was gone, stream was ended. People got angry again. <laughs> so that's something we wanted to overcome as well. Third thing is the open broadcaster software. You see a screen here with a lot of options. That non-technical person, Jenny, she had to take these options into account when starting a live stream, which wasn't quite fun for her. She just wanted to do her social marketing stuff, plug in that video and start it. Not be concerned with all these kind of stuff. I won't go over them right now, but it's a lot. <laughs> Another thing was we tried to distribute our music, not only to Europe, but also to countries like China, Australia, and it's, not fun to get up in the middle of the night to start a live stream just for our Chinese viewers. You want to plan that ahead to um, broadcast it at a certain time. So that brings us to the term live. What actually is live? Um, let's start with a sports event. You're watching a soccer match. Uh, this is Sky Sports and on the top right it says live. Who considers this as a live broadcast? Please raise your hands if you consider it. Yeah, okay, quite some people. And actually it is live, but it has a delay to prevent accidental images. If somebody comes running onto the field and he's totally naked, you will never see that because they already got the cameras on the audience and they already caught that before it is broadcast on the TV channel. So there is a delay. Is it still live? Yeah, I consider it live. Um, gaming. So gaming, who thinks um, live streams of gaming are actually live? Yeah, still quite some hands. <laughs> well. For me, I think uh, the games are always scripted. Cutscenes, they're always scripted. They will always be the same. Is it live? Yeah, they are played live. Yeah, okay, let's consider this as live as well. Um, final thing, a pre-recorded session or a pre-recorded radio show, which is being broadcast on Twitch or any other live streaming platform. Who considers this as live? Okay, I see a lot of less hands. Um, it's pre-recorded, but it's sent out to everyone uh, at the same time, so everyone is looking at the same thing at the same time. For this bundle, therefore, we defined that everything that is si streamed to a set of viewers who are watching the same thing at the same time, we would consider that live or semi-live and we don't make a real difference technically between live or semi-live, but therefore we created the live broadcast bundle. Um, now, we are going to look at how are we solving all these problems that we gathered uh, 
the past few minutes. If you want to check it out, it's already very easy. There is a demo for the project which you can check out today. Don't run it in production. There is no security over it. Everyone can start live streaming on your account if you run this in production. But it's just to try it out and just play with how live streaming works from your local machine. You could expand on it and add user stuff and things like that, but um, don't use it in production as it is. Um, it supports um, Linux, OS X. Um, I even started testing on Windows 10 recently. Still a few bugs to fix, but on Linux and OS X, you're totally fine. Um, who of you is already using Symfony? Yeah, quite some Symfony users, so you'll be perfectly comfortable with this. Um, let's look at the kind of PHP versions that we run in production. Who of you are running PHP 5.0 in production? Great. <laughs> PHP 5.3? Yeah, a few hands. 5.4, 5. 4, 5. PHP 5.6. Who's running PHP 6 in production? Great, you're all still awake. <laughs> That's good to hear. <laughs> Anyone running PHP 7? Oh, awesome. I see a lot of hands. That's good, that's good. So you'll be totally fine with running this bundle on these PHP versions. I think the minimum version is now set at PHP 5.5. So that should uh, suffice for most of your setups. Um, you can also just get the bundle to install it in your uh, Symfony application. Also at Composer Require and instead of uh, demo it says bundle. It's uh, still uh, in an alpha stage. We have determined a feature set that we want to complete until we completely stabilize it. We're almost there. Um, but the good thing is every bug we fix, every new feature we add, we uh, make a new alpha release and put it out there and we always try to at least keep it functional and not breaking your code in production and we're actually using this bundle ourselves uh, in production to do our live broadcasts at the moment. So how is the high level overview of this bundle? We just separate three parts. The input, we do processing and we have an output. The input now is always something which is pre-recorded. That could be something on a file on the local machine, a URL. RTMP is being worked on, which is the last feature before we start stabilizing for the 1.0 release. Um, then we have processing. We'll get further into that in a few. And then there are outputs. And you might have noticed that we have Twitch twice here because we can have multiple Twitch channels. We have uh, the label Spin and Records. We also have a sub-label Spin and Deep for Deep House. But if we want to put out a new release to both channels, this bundle should be able to send it to both the Twitch channels at the same time because that server has some really nasty good bandwidth. So how does that look inside the bundle? Um, the scheduler is the most important part of it. It's, uh, at the moment, it's not an event loop yet. Um, it's a cron job which runs every minute. And what it does, it retrieves the live broadcast entities. Those are the broadcasts you have planned to start at a certain time. Then it checks your process IDs, if that broadcast is already running or not. If it is running, it's fine, nothing happens. If it isn't running, it will start the process. If it's st still running and it needs to stop, it will kill the process. That's th what the scheduler does and it's the core of this uh, bundle. Um, then we have the IO stream services. So we don't want to just provide input from only a file to only Twitch. We have several services so you can have several inputs like the file URL, RTMP, and several channels which you broadcast to like Twitch, Facebook, and any other you might want to implement. But how do these services look then? Well, 
again, we have the input which goes into the processing. Um, the live broadcast entity has a title, um, description, which is obligatory for Facebook, a start and an end time, and you can check the option, uh, it's a Boolean value, if the stream will need to be killed when the end time is reached, or if you just want to continue until the input, one of the ones at the top, is done. So you could run it indefinitely until the input starts, uh, stops giving uh, data. And last but not least, you again have the channels which we support. <coughs> so the inputs, let's just go over them quickly. Um, there is the file input, which is a file on your server on which you are running the bundle. It should be accessible, not through uh, any other protocol than the file system. And it's mainly meant for pre-recorded video. The URL, it's actually quite the same as the file, but it can access it over HTTP or HTTPS to broadcast directly from a remote server, let's say an Amazon S3 bucket where you store all your videos to broadcast them to your favorite network. And then there is RTMP, which will be available soon. We're working on that to include an RTMP server with a bundle. What you can do then is um, open up your open broadcaster software at a remote location. And even though if your connection isn't as strong as you would want, you could still um, send it to that one RTMP server and then broadcast on Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, Ustream uh, at once because you're using the bandwidth capacity of your server and not of the connection on your location where you're at. So you have this used bandwidth of your server that you can utilize to broadcast to any network you want or even multiple channels on the same network. Um, so if we start look at the inputs, um, if you want to create your own input, you say, you might want to say, uh, okay, I have an FTP server and I want to pull it directly from FTP. How would uh, such an input service look? It would start with uh, the input interface, which has one public function, generate input command. Um, to explain this a little bit further, um, who knows what FFmpeg uh, is on a server? Okay, I don't see all hands raised yet. FFmpeg is a command line tool to um, take input video, convert it, and send it to an output. And what the bundle actually does is create these command line statements from a certain configuration. But at the core of it, we will need to create those command line uh, statements. So for the input, we have the generate input CMD. Um, how it looks, we will look uh, into that in a few. But it will create command line um, parameters for FFmpeg to take an input file to broadcast or an input stream. Um, then we have an abstract entity class, a basic input, and what the input actually always will need is only an ID. <coughs> if you want to have a file location, it's something of the implementation of the uh, extension of this class. If you want to have a URL or FTP with username password, you can extend upon this base input class and create that uh, in any way you would like yourself. So this is one of the inputs, it's the file input, which looks for the file on the local server. It has another method, get file location, which returns a string that gets put into the input file name. This is the implementation of that interface. And it just checks, does this file exist? If it does, create the input arguments and always use escape shell arguments to uh, prevent hackers from doing crazy stuff on your server. <laughs> um, and what it says here is, I want to use an input at playback speed at this location. And that's everything there is to it to create your own input 
from uh, any kind of source you would like. So you can get really creative with this if you want to. So after that input is received um, and the broadcast has been made, the processing um, class will start visiting the database to see if there is any broadcast which needs to start or stop. It will use FFmpeg to get that input and output parameters and it will use the operating systems process list to see uh, what is running and what needs to be start or stopped and how it can start and stop it because every process on your operating system will get a unique ID which is being used. Um, so let's also dive into the outputs. Um, we now have Twitch and Ustream. They are um, available out of the box uh, in the bundle and they are very simple to use. If you want to start testing with the bundle, I always recommend start using Twitch. It's easy to register for, a for an account and all you need to start live streaming is the broadcast key after you have uh, registered. That's the only configuration. It's the most simple setup to get uh, a feel of how does this works and uh, really how easy it is to set up. Then there is uh, Facebook as an output channel. Facebook is a little bit tougher. They want you to connect to an application on their servers. That application needs a few rights, uh, which need a Facebook employee review. We did the review, we got uh, through within I think it was three or four days, so that was actually not that bad. Um, but it's required to do Facebook live streaming on their platform. A little bit more tedious, but not too shabby. And finally, we have YouTube, which is a little bit easier than Facebook. Uh, all you need to do is uh, get access to the YouTube V3 uh, data API. And you can do that through their API console, get an application secret, application ID, and you're ready to start uh, your broadcasts on the channels you have available on YouTube. So YouTube is pretty okay to implement or to configure. You don't need to implement anything because it's already included in the bundle. And of course you can create your own channels there are still a lot of other um, live streaming platforms which you could connect to. We are adding more and more over time. But if your favorite platform is not in the bundle yet, you could create your own output channel. So let's have a look how that is done. If you want to uh, add, s well, maybe some Polish live streaming network which we haven't thought about yet. Um, there is an entity. And the output channel is always saved as an entity. And there is a service which handles that output channel and generates uh, the code to start broadcasting to it. So let's start with the entity. Uh, we also implemented the base class for it, so that makes it easy to uh, create new channels. Um, and all it consists of is a channel ID and a channel name, so you will recognize to which channel you're broadcasting. Nothing fancy. Um, and if you look at the output entity for Twitch, it has an additional stream key, which is only needed for Twitch, and a stream server, which has the live value, or the default value for their server, to which you want to start a web, a live stream. Um, then there is the service after the entity. Well, the service is uh, also an interface. You can set the channel, which is the channel entity we just saw with the ID, name, server, key. And again, we have generate output CMD, which generates uh, the output command line part for FFmpeg. So you have the input part, the output part, and they're all together one single FFmpeg command with certain flags. And there's also a channel type, so in your code you can check which kind of channel you're working with. Um, this one is the one for Facebook, the implementation of the output service. Um, it picks up the stream URL which we 
um, retrieved through the Facebook API. It's always a unique URL per stream. And then again, it generates a part for um, the live streaming on Facebook. And you can also get the type which is being configured. So this is actually the class name for the Facebook output service. And you just need to tag it with the name live broadcast output. As soon as you tag it with this tag, the live broadcast bundle will know, oh, I've got a new, I've got a new output which I can use to stream my broadcast to. And as long as they have the interface implemented, this tag, you will be able to do your broadcasting to any channel you would like. Um, we also included a small bonus, which is the Sonata uh, admin. Do people here use the Sonata admin <coughs> bundles? Few? Okay. So you could benefit from this. You can use the bundle perfectly without configuring this, but within spinning we're using Sonata admin, so we thought, well, we might as well just include it to give an easy interface to start planning your broadcasts. And like you see here, we have included fields for the broadcast name. We can put in the description, when does it need to start, when does it need to end, um, does the broadcast need to be killed on the end time, and then we get the inputs. Well, we'll get into this in a few, I think. So you might ask yourself, okay, this all sounds really fun, but what are my alternatives? Because I don't want to do it in PHP, I don't want to program this myself or maintain this myself. Well, first alternative, if you want to broadcast to multiple channels, is open up a lot of these guys, which will probably give you quite a headache. Another thing is Restream.io. It's uh, a service on the web which will do basically the same as a service uh, that this bundle does. So, well, while uh, I was developing this, I wanted to investigate the differences between what I was building and what they are offering. This is what I got out of it. Um, Restream.io is offered as a service, so you have zero maintenance. That makes it quite easy. Um, the live broadcast bundle is created as an open source package. So on the other hand, with the live broadcast bundle, if you're good at coding, hey, you could do anything with it that you can imagine. It's just code. Um, Restream is closed source, so there's no way you could extend on it uh, in any way that you w would want to. Um, the live broadcast bundle now only has four networks supported to stream to. Restream has a lot more, but they are missing out on Facebook, which is getting quite big lately. Um, well, like I said, it's easy to extend. We have the Facebook support. Uh, also something about Restream is you can sign up there for free and you can start streaming for free. And I was really wondering what is their business model? While I was investigating further, I saw that if I clicked a few things, they started asking for money. So, okay, I want to add a third channel. Oh, that will cost you money. It's not really clear how much they are asking to provide their services um, once you start using their application. So that's quite unclear. Well, with the live broadcast bundle, you know that at least the software is free. <laughs> so that could be something uh, you could consider when choosing which one you want to use. Um, also, Restream doesn't support using pre-recorded video, so you would have to use Open Broadcaster software again, start it at the time that you want to start your stream, you cannot plan anything ahead of time, um, and only send it to their servers and they will rebroadcast it to all the social networks. As with the live broadcast bundle, you could just say, this is the file, I want to broadcast it at that time to these channels, which is quite a difference as well. So. Yeah, if you only want to do easy streams, Restream might be fine for you. If you want to have full control, the live broadcast bundle will probably be a weapon of choice. So we are still working on this project, <coughs> me and my colleague Paul, who's sitting over there. 
and we still have a few goals um, before we really release the first stable release. Of course, like I said, more inputs. Uh, RTMP is a protocol which was designed by Adobe. Um, it was first known as the Flash Messaging Service Protocol. Mm, but it has evolved into the default protocol for live streaming video. Um, Facebook uses it, YouTube uses RTMP protocol, Twitch even uses it. So it's become the de facto standard for live streaming video. Um, we're also thinking about creating multiple layers, so if you want to have a logo on top of your video the whole time, maybe we should be able to pre-configure that. That won't be a version 1 release, before that will be something we will create after stabilizing first release. <coughs> um, then we also want to add more channels. These are the channels we have implemented right now. Um, last time I was giving this presentation in July and we were still working on YouTube. Ustream wasn't there yet. Um, so we're rapidly increasing the number of channels we're adding and we would like to add more and more. And well, if somebody implements a channel, feel free to send in the pull request with the channel you implemented and we will gladly incorporate it into the bundle as well. And of course, we want to have more quality. Um, Chuck Norris might do it perfectly, <laughs> um, but we would have to work on more tests for the code. Um, we would like to improve on documentation. The readme file now provides fairly good documentation to at least get started with the bundle, to get it running, to do your streams but we want to make it as easy as possible for anyone to start a stream. We would even like to see how we can pull out that Facebook review and make it even easier that way. But we're still looking at the options we have uh, to evolve the bundle with uh, these kind of features. So in conclusion, um, live broadcasting on a professional level is hard. You have to take into account bandwidth, outages, um, technical knowledge of the people using uh, the software to stream, um, which is quite hard. Um, as we see it, broadcasting it consists of three primary things, input, processing, output. The files, how does it need to be processed and where does it need to go to? Um, well, Spinning Records invested time and resources during office hours. We would be very glad if anyone who finds a bug, fixes it, would send it in as a PR. Uh, we would be eternally grateful for uh, that if you start using this bundle and come across something that we have overlooked. Um, okay, this is the time where I'm going to really fail. Let's do a live demo. So, let's see. Yes. No, not ending it. There we go. Um, I have an HTTP server running with a checkout of the bundle. So, let's just start with seeing what we have available for the command line. So there are two commands implemented in this bundle. Um, the first one is that you can test if you have the prerequisites um, from the shell. So let's just get started with that one. So what we see here, um, the live broadcast bundle will check for a few command line uh, things that it requires to, um, to keep track of process IDs and to work with all these processes to live stream your video. It will check is FFmpeg command installed. Um, on Mac it will check for PS and grab. On Linux distributions it will only check for PS because it has different flags than uh, Mac OS. And the kill command to stop certain broadcasts. So everything is okay here. We have access to all the commands we need to start a broadcast so we can start our server. <coughs> what I did here is start the server with um, server run.
for Symfony, a command just to start up a local server. Um, let's see, where I, do I have it? And this is what you get once you have installed the broadcast demo. So let's just dive into the admin. Well, like I said, the demo doesn't have any security or authentication. So you will get into the admin without any problems. Anyone can create broadcasts, add channels, and stuff like that. Um, before this presentation, I already added my first channel. And it is a Twitch channel. So all it has is a channel name, a stream key, which I will again have to reset after this presentation before anyone starts streaming stuff on behalf of my name. <laughs> And the server, Twitch has multiple servers you can uh, stream to. And this is actually quite important. We had um, our bundle running on an S3 instance of Amazon. And in development and on our acceptance servers, everything was running perfectly. But once we deployed it to Amazon, our streams started stuttering. And after some investigation, we concluded that Facebook only buffers the stream for two seconds and the latency between the Amazon server and the Facebook server and Facebook doesn't provide any other servers was way too high it was beyond that two seconds and that was why our stream was stuttering on the other hand Facebook was still receiving all the data and at the end of the stream Facebook asks you do you want to save this live stream uh, for people to look it back and all the data did arrive at Facebook, so the saved video didn't contain any stuttering at all. And that brought us to the latency issue. Always test uh, a live stream if the latency isn't too big, uh, otherwise it could really mess up the quality of your live stream. And for Twitch, you have the option to uh, add the closest server to your broadcasting server. So once we have the channel, we can start creating our live broadcast. Um, let's just give it a name. I already have a demo video. Um, let's see the time. Well, yeah, we can start any minute. That's good. We don't want to cut it off. And we're going to use the output channel on Twitch that we already have created. If you're at the screen and you're thinking, oh, I missed out to add a channel. Sure, no problem. Let's add a Facebook channel. I hope the internet is connected. Not really seeing any connection right now. Um, let's see. Okay, we should be connected now. Opening up Facebook. It's not retrieving. There it is. <coughs> so we have uh, several Facebook entities here. Uh, it could be a page, a Facebook event, it could be a company page. Um, well, these are all I am connected to. So these are all channels we could stream uh, our live videos to. It's quite a lot which you create in Facebook over time. Um, well, for the sake of the demo, I'm not just doing Facebook yet. Um, YouTube, 
it's the same story. You can connect with your YouTube account to YouTube and then you can say, okay, this is the user which is logged in now. Would you create a channel for this user? Then you just press the blue button. Otherwise you take the red pill. Oh, that's something completely different, sorry. But if I attach it, it will just give my refresh token and just create a YouTube channel which I could scream to. Um, let's just keep it with Twitch now. So I give a title, a description. We start right now. We're not going to cut it off. Um, let's see which file we have available. Okay. Let's add new. So we're using a file input. Same concept within Sonata as we used for the outputs. And then create this. If we go back to the list. So we could even plan um, 10 broadcasts. We could be a 24-7 broadcasting channel using this bundle just by planning things behind each other and just keep engaging with our users 24-7 whenever we would like to. We could do reruns of certain stuff. It's all possible. Um, once you have set up your uh, broadcast, normally, like I said, the broadcast loop will be run from a cron job. Let's just go back to this one. So that brings us to the second command. Uh, on our servers, every minute that second command broadcast is being run. And I'm not sure if it's going to work over the internet connection, but we're just going to give it a try. Of course, Symphony 3, not 2. Let's just see what it did. So there we have it. We started the broadcaster and it's now saying I started this process with all these uh, flags and it was really easy to set up. Even Jenny within our company is comfortable with filling out the stuff uh, on the Sonata admin and then in the background we do all the complicated stuff to get that broadcast running. So let's see if the internet connection is really holding up. Not sure if it's going to say if I'm live or not, but we will see. This is always the fun, exciting part. <laughs> Still saying offline, but setting up connections. Ah, something is happening. Of course, commercials. But if we skip the advertisement, now I'm really challenging this connection by streaming and listening. And there we have it. The video that we were planning and broadcasting through the live channel. And to prove that it is the same video, This is the one on the file location, exactly the same, of course. Okay, let's stop this. Ah, nice, I'm quiet. So that concludes the live demo and also my presentation. I would like to thank you all for listening, for being here. It's already late and I'm very happy that you were here with me. Does anyone still have any questions? Um, okay, the question was, do I have uh, any experience from this and uh, challenges with open sourcing this project? Um, 
my experience, um, first experience is that you think you might get some pull requests, but probably you don't. <laughs> People need to be very interested in your subject. And actually, that's one of the reasons why I was uh, well, I started doing these presentations. I want to tell people how easy it is to use this, how they could use this for their goals and their company. And I'm hoping from this to get more pull requests and stuff. But I do see a lot of installations happening on packagist.org and it's great to see that people really start to use it and they are um, embracing the project. Um, but in terms of management and stuff, uh, it usually boils down to that you have to do most of it yourself. So, um, yeah, it's just marketing promotion that you would need to make it uh, more available to users. Does that answer your question? Oh, why we would open source it? Yes, okay, um, this is quite a fun thing. Um, first thing was, um, is it something we built uh, that anyone can use? That was The answer to that first question was yes. Um, second question we asked was, um, Armin van Buren, do you know him? He's uh, another DJ. Well, at least he's our competition. So second question was, does Armin van Buren uh, have something with his bundle that he could benefit from? Answer was no. So we could open source it. That was totally fine. <laughs> so that's how we got there. But the main benefits is that we are hoping to uh, support other developers to make the m media platform bigger and um, well, at also get return value from it when people start using it and implementing their own ideas and open sourcing that to us. So it's a little bit give and take and we started giving and we hope at some point that we can take back uh, something like a bug fix or stuff like that. That brought us to the ultimate decision to open source this package. Okay. Any other questions? Yeah, hi, hello. Uh, another question, two quick questions actually. Uh, first of them, uh, you said that you're working on RTMP server. Uh, do you have any sort of timeline where you want to release it? Uh, this is the first one. And the second one, very quick, uh, uh, one of the requirements is to have an FFMPG installed on your server. Uh, do you need, uh, or the server need to have installed any kind of special codecs or stuff like that? Yes. <laughs> um, well, to answer the first question, um, building an RTMP server would be very hard. <coughs> so what we're doing now is optionally download RED5, which is an existing package already, which provides an RTMP server. And we want to pre-configure it to make it safe for usage with stream keys, just like you would configure uh, your Twitch. So we're now working on making that default configuration for the RED5 server so you can um, use your own server w over the RTMP protocol with a stream key to make it more secure. Um, your second question was uh, FFmpeg. Do you need any extensions for other codecs? Um, the answer is yes, because it's the core of uh, encoding that video and sending it out to uh, other platforms. So you would need every encoding that you uh, want to use for broadcasting. We also implemented reporting, so you would find back uh, any errors that occur in your log if certain uh, encoders aren't implemented yet. But most installations of FFmpeg come with uh, H.264 implementation, which is almost a standard uh, in video uh, encoding these days. So mostly you will be fine and won't uh, encounter any errors. Okay. Any more questions? Oh, another question. Uh, how do you handle uh, the case that FFmpeg process is killed? Um, if the process is killed by an external factor, um, it will, well, this morning I saw something about um, the PC NTL SIG int, 
we are going to implement that to at least log it, but we can't prevent it. So if any other process kills FFmpeg, your stream will end. That's what happens at the moment. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, definitely shoot. And we will open up a bug for it and make it as good as possible, definitely. <laughs> so I would like to thank you all. I'm not going to keep you any further from dinner and the party tonight. Enjoy yourselves, and I hope to see you soon.